Welcome to the last talk of today. And our speaker is Shane Kelly from Tokyo, who will talk about an important variant CDH topology. <laughs> yes. Um, so thank you very much to the um, organizers for uh, giving me the opportunity to talk about this, about this work in progress. Um, and thank you also very much for giving me an afternoon talk. Um, okay. <clears throat> So, yeah, so this is, I'll talk about a, um, a variant of the CDH topology. So to begin with, um, since it's a, a motives crowd, I won't feel, I don't feel the need to give a lot of motivation for why you should be interested in this. I think I'm going to assume everyone in the room is already interested in this. Uh, and okay, but I will recall uh, some nice properties of the, some nice properties of the CDH topology that we know and some um, reasons why we might want to think of something a little bit different. So for the whole, for the whole talk, um, <clears throat> uh, well, at least for the first half of the talk, um, I'm going to restrict to schemes of, um, finite presentation or finite type. over actually maybe I should cut this in half yeah uh, finite presentation over a um, an Ethereum an Ethereum based scheme yes so a lot of the things I say will be valid in more in greater generality but um, some of the things won't and so just to make things easier let's always work over some Ethereum base <clears throat> okay, definition, which everybody knows, the CDH topology. CDH topology. Uh, on this category of uh, finite type schemes, finite presentation schemes over Nathurian S, uh, is generated by by coverings of the form so a goes to x and y goes to x uh, and there's two classes of generating coverings so the first one is basic Nisnovich coverings and these ones you ask that a goes to x is open an open immersion uh, y goes to x is et al. And um, this y goes to x is um, it's an isomorphism over the, the complement of, of A. Um, sorry? I think you can take any structure. <coughs> I'm happy to take reduced. <laughs> uh, and the second one is the abstract blow ups. Abstract. Um, which are a proper version of this. So here we have A to A to X closed. Y to X proper. Uh, and the same condition, y to x is an isomorphism over the, the uh, complement, uh, not with the reduced structure. Although in the end, it doesn't matter because <clears throat> um, you can take, so a special case of this is when y is empty and a is the reduced x. So. CDH can't, topology can't see any nilpotence, and this is basically the uh, the thing which we which we don't like, or which causes um, causes uh, problems sometimes. So we have yeah, so nice things. 
nice things about the CDH topology. So we have this, uh, this uh, CD square condition for descent. So, I mean, so this is, this is Vavodsky. So a pre-sheaf of spaces F is what is a CDH sheaf or has CDH descent. If and only if <clears throat> so here B is of course <clears throat> B is the um, the pullback, so we make this a pullback square, and so a pre sheaf is uh, has CDH descent if and only if um, for for these two for these two kinds of um, pairs of morphism, uh, this corresponding square is Cartesian or homotopy Cartesian. <clears throat> so the pre sheaf of sets version of this. Is yeah, so it's just the well, very close to the sheaf condition for these families. Um, so, a second thing, which I guess is essentially um, due to Goodwilly and uh, Lichtenbaum, but for the CDH topology, it's written in my paper with Gabber. Good really. Is that a morphism? So, yeah. So, a morphism of, of sheaves is an isomorphism or an equivalence if and only if F of R goes to F of G. is uh, an isomorphism uh, or an equivalence so g of r for every cancel cancel valuation ring r <clears throat> so almost every hensel valuation ring will not be in this in this category of finite presentation uh, over an Ethereum, our Ethereum base. Um, so you take the left kind extension to all affine S schemes. And so that's what this means. It's the left kind extension evaluated on spec R. So it's a co limit over all factorizations of spec R goes to X to S through things of something finite type. So all neighborhoods of, <clears throat> of this local ring. And the next one is, uh, so, yeah, so, so we can put lots of names here. So this is um, Eldon, uh, Mark, and Viome. And so I guess I mean, you could probably also put Vavodsky and there would be some <clears throat> some argument to put Lurie's name there too. So if the dimension of S is is D, then the infinity topos of C D H sheaves has homotopy dimension. Less than or equal to D. And in particular, um, <clears throat> in particular, this thing is hyper complete. Uh, 
Um, so this means a, a pre sheaf of spaces will have descent with respect to check hypercoverings, um, if and only if it has descent with respect to all hypercoverings. Uh, and second nice property is you have a um, the cohomological dimension is bounded. So if f is a sheaf CDH sheaf of abelian groups. then then the CDH cohomology vanishes for n bigger than the dimension of S. <clears throat> um, so the next one is um, yeah, so it's Zizinski and I mean, heavily using um, Joseph, well, I mean, using Joseph's uh, proper base change. And yeah, so maybe there are some no more names you could put in there, but. So we have Quillen K theory or uh, connective K theory. And then here we have non connective K theory. And here we have Chuck's homotopy invariant K theory. Uh, so let's consider them all as pre sheaves of S1 spectra, or sheave, yeah, pre sheaves of S1 spectra. And then when we, when we take the CDH sheafification, they all become the same. <clears throat> so this is already a CDH sheaf. And uh, so in particular, um, we get a descent spectral sequence. So this is the CDH sheafification of the pre sheaf of uh, abelian groups of homotopy, homotopy groups. H minus I minus J S. Um, so because this thing has um, CDH descent. <clears throat> and by this one, um, a lot of this vanishes. So this will vanish for J uh, in the appropriate part. <laughs> which means that it's strong. And so from this, you can deduce that it's strongly convergent. Yeah, so it's strongly convergent. Strongly convergent by, <clears throat> by that vanishing. Say the name again. Any more? Yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, this is a combination of a lot of statements. Yeah. Um, so if R is a Hensel valuation ring, then the K theory, the negative K theory or homotopy invariant K theory vanishes. And so this, since these are the, the fiber functors on this site, <clears throat> from this vanishing, you deduce that these CDH sheafifications vanish um, for when negative J is negative. 
Um, and you know also the bound on the cohomology from here. So when you put all of these together, you get uh, kh i of s is zero for i smaller than minus d dimension of s minus the dimension of s. Okay. Uh, so yeah, maybe I should have written these on the sideboards, but so that's the end of the, ah, okay. So now I have one more, it's almost the end. Uh, so I already mentioned that um, one of the things which sometimes is not a desirable property is that the CDH topology can't see nilpotence. Um, so there's no way of doing um, like this kind of deformation. There's no, these deformation arguments. But we can take inspiration from um, <clears throat> from these people who say that uh, given an abstract blow up square, so so given the a to x and y to x of satisfying these properties, everything Ethereum, so now instead of Ka, which is what I would have written over there, I write Kan. and put them here. <clears throat> um, so this is Cartesian. Homotopy Cartesian. So where these a n are the nth infinitesimal thickenings. So we have a closed in x and b closed in y. And these are the infinitesimal thickenings of these closed, these closed things. So we can take inspiration for this and try and make a, um, a topology which still has lots of nice properties like the CDH topology, but um, is a little bit coarser and can, can see nilpotence. So Uh, so everything from now on is um, work in progress, which means that we have lots of um, pages of tech written, but nothing is completely written. Um, so I kind of hesitate to, um, to call anything a, a theorem or proposition since it's not. Well, I mean, some things are written down, but some things are not. So I'll just say, I'll just make a lot of claims. But... I mean, basically everything has quite complete proofs and some things have, do have complete proofs. Um, okay, so the definition. Okay, so I'm gonna define two topologies in fact, and I don't wanna to commit to giving them a name, either of them a name. So the first one will be the sigma topology. So this is a topology on these schemes and um, so finite presentation schemes over an Ethereum base. And this is, is generated by, so the Nisnovich topology. So, Families like this that satisfy uh, the first condition. And so given, <clears throat> given an abstract blow up square, so given two morphisms that satisfy the second condition, I take the family of all thickenings of A. So this has, family has countably many elements, usually, almost always. And 
the the other leg of that square. <clears throat> Okay, so the first thing to notice is that, as I mentioned, this is not a finite family. So the corresponding topology will not be coherent. So you can't incite uh, Deline's uh, theorem and deduce that there's a conservative family of fiber functors on this topos. Nonetheless, there is. <clears throat> but you just have to prove it um, by some other way. So the first claim <clears throat> is that a morphism of sigma sheaves uh, is an isomorphism if and only if fr to gr is an isomorphism for every um, ring every ring of the form r equals um, yeah so I, I don't really have a yeah, so I don't really have a preference which one is O and which one is A, but when I was talking to Matthew about this, he had a very strong preference. So I apologize if <laughs> I write the one which you don't like. A ring like this, where? Where A is a dimension zero local ring. Uh, kappa is the residue field of A and um, O is a valuation ring or a Hensel valuation ring. <clears throat> so of course there's also a version where you use Zariski instead of Nisnovich and then you just delete Hensel. So for some easy examples of this kind of rings is you can take O equal kappa. Then, so any dimension zero local ring is a local ring for this topology. And the other easy example is if A is kappa, then R is O. So any Hensel valuation ring is a um, local ring for this topology. And for a concrete, slightly more um, interesting example, you could take um, A to be, um, so, I mean, there's lots of choices for this, but that's, You can take the, the dual numbers over Q and then choose, choose any valuation, any discrete valuation ring of Q. So then, then R will be something like Z E plus, plus Q E, Q uh, epsilon. So I mean, looking at this construction, you can probably imagine uh, you can probably have fun creating your own. Okay. <clears throat> so, okay, so I did the definition. I did this one. Now I'm going to do this one. So free sheaf is a sigma sheaf if and only if 
it sends so I distinguish Nisnevich squares and pro uh, yeah okay let me not rephrase it like that if not if it sends Nisnevich squares to Cartesian squares and for every abstract blob square. For every abstract blob square, lim f b n coming from f y. is Cartesian. So, so here I have lim and in that corner I have quote lim. So you can also, so I didn't say what this was a pre-sheaf of, if it was a pre-sheaf of sets or spaces or, so whatever, so this limb happens in whatever category F is taking values in. So if F is a pre-sheaf of per spectra, if, then this limb will be quotes limb. Or if F is a pre-sheaf of spect S1 spectra, then this will be no quotes limb. <clears throat> and of course, there's an adjunction between spectra and per spectra. And so the right adjoint will preserve the sheaf property. Um, okay, so I did that. So now a question. So I gave all of these nice properties of the um, CDH topology, and perhaps you thought I was going to say they're all true for the sigma topology, or claim that they're all true for the sigma topology. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to ask if the homotopy dimension is finite if it's hypercomplete or if we have a strongly converging descent spectral sequence. Question mark. So, <clears throat> Um, yeah, to my knowledge, the current status is that we do not have a proof of, of these things. Yes. Uh, so, sorry to tell you, but I, I didn't get it. So, are you taking, like, that the cardinal for the pro also? Or the limit to the limit? Uh, it depends which, depends which category. So, uh, Appreciate F. No, no, no. It's up to you. <laughs> appreciate is 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 your F appreciate of appreciate uh, of spectra. Then it's just then you have one spectrum here, one spectrum here, one. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so definitely for sheaves of sets and, um, yeah, so I guess if you want to know it for sheaves of spaces, then you would need to know that the topos is hypercomplete, which we don't. Yeah. Which we, we have strong reason to, <laughs> we have strong reason to believe that it is, but we don't have a proof. Um, not right now. I very happy to. There is more to say. Um, should I say more now? Uh, ask me again in um, yeah after this board. Ask me again. <clears throat> okay, so 
we have one topology on these finite type schemes over an Ethereum S, uh, which kind of looks nice, but also we can't say uh, as many things as we would like to right now. So here comes the second topology. So a definition. So I'm going to change the site now. Let F schemes. So this is not the usual way of thinking about these, but this is the only way that I can think about these. So these are formal schemes. And I'm considering them as in schemes, in objects in these schemes. Um, and I want to take those in schemes, which are So the category of completions along closed subschemes. <clears throat> so things like uh, colim um, colim zn if z is some closed subscheme inside some x. Uh, and Shuji complained that I should, I should make this bigger and take actual formal schemes, which, because there's some formal schemes, which aren't of this form, but I mean, we're dealing with uh, Zariski sheaves. So I could even make this just affine and we would get the same, same site. So I don't know, whatever formal schemes you like, you're happy to use those ones. <clears throat> um, yeah but they kind of have to be small enough. Like they have to be finite presentation enough. Otherwise, it's, um, you have even more problems. Okay, so this is our site. Uh, so the fire topology. So sigma was for scheme and phi is for formal. The fire topology on this category of formal schemes is generated generated by the Nis by Nisnevich coverings so inside formal schemes you have the category of i mean if you complete along the the total thing then you just get a discrete normal discrete scheme um, so i take Nis uh, Nisnevich coverings And families. So basically, the formal the formal version of of what I wrote there. Um, so colon a n goes to x and y goes to x. like this associated to or coming from abstract roll-ups. <clears throat> okay, so this is our second candidate. So this two element set is a finite set because two is finite. So, um, and also this is a nice enough category. It has fiber products. It's not too big. So we can, we can apply the Lin's theorem here and automatically sheaves with respect to this topology, the phi topology. So we do know that there's a conservative family of fiber functors and we can uh, say what the fiber functors are. Um, and I don't want to because, um, so, where was it? Here I um, here I did this nice uh, this neat trick where I said f of r. I evaluated f on r by taking this um, left Kahn extension. So under the hood, this is uh, this is actually a colimit overall over, over some nice pro object pro object uh, some nice pro scheme. Um, so implicitly there, I was using um, I was using the fact that 
the category of all affine schemes, let's say, is equivalent to pro objects in the category of finite presentation affine schemes. So this would be one way of saying it. Um, but this is no longer true in the formal setting. So you end up actually, you end up having to work with, um, uh, with what is it, ind, ind pro rings or pro ind schemes. And this is a complete mess. So I can write down what it is, and it's basically a formal version of that. Uh, but I'm not going to. Okay, second point. That was the first remark. Uh, so the second remark is there's canonical adjunction, so more than an adjunction. So one of these is a subtopos of the other. Um, so, so this is a subtopos of that. This one is fully faithful. This one preserves preserves limits. And in fact, um, this one is a localization. This category is a localization of this category um, at the, uh, the class of families. Well, it's a sh okay. So this one is a sheafification of this one. Um, where you also add the families. So this is, um, chief, if, uh, yeah, I'm not sure the best way of saying this. Let me say it this way. Sigma is equal to phi generated by the phi topology and families of this form. So you take your formal scheme, and this is the family of these, all these non-formal approximations to your formal scheme. <clears throat> and pre-sheaves which satisfy the sheaf condition for this family are exactly the, um, they're exactly the pre-sheaves which satisfy lim f x n is equal to, is equal to F colon yeah <clears throat> so the sheaf condition for these families is 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 exactly saying that that F turns this uh, quote colon into a limit um, so uh, there was a question earlier about about the proof of this. So this one does have a CD structure. And so you can use the CD machinery to know that descent corresponds to certain Cartesian squares. Um, uh, but then descent for sigma is the same as descent for phi plus descent for these morphisms. So it's exactly descent for Cartesian squares plus the fact that you can bring the collim outside. So that's the, that's the proof of that claim. To sketch of the proof of that claim. Yeah. Yeah, there are some more things to show. Yeah. But that, that's the idea. Oh, yeah? Yeah, sorry. Uh, 
off. <laughs> okay, well. I could have just altered that. Um, so yeah, so what one of the things I just said was a free sheaf F is a fire sheaf uh, if and only if <clears throat> then Znistovich squares to Cartesian squares. And um, and families, uh, yeah. So if it only if it's so this is which squares and this is which squares to Cartesian squares and um, formal blow up squares. Cartesian squares. Um, so these are all, I would say, quite solid claims. Um, and now we move into the <coughs> area which is a little bit more in progress. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, I just wrote the, yeah, yeah. If you were listening, there's no new information here. Okay, so, so I had this question about homotopy dimension. So this fire topology, has homotopy dimension homotopy dimension less than or equal to s so it's hypercomplete and has a strongly convergent descent spectral sequence dimension less than has homotopy dimension less than or equal to Like this? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so finally, a, um, like a application. So there's a natural equivalence if I take So connective K theory and non-connective K theory. Um, <clears throat> so this theorem will tell you that non-connective K theory is a phi sheaf. Uh, this one is not a phi sheaf, but we can take its associated phi sheaf. And the claim is that that these are the same. So non-connective non-connective K theory is the phi sheafification of connective K theory. Um, so this is as um, pre sheaves of spectra, S1 spectra on non-formal schemes. <clears throat> So in particular, also on <clears throat> just on normal schemes. No. Uh, well, yes. Well, uh, both statements should be true. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, but this remains Cartesian when you remove the quotes. No? Okay, you just. Yeah, so I, well, I, I define it like this. I take the, the right kind of extension. Uh, oh yeah, so there's two versions. There's, there's yeah, as a pre as a pre sheaf of spectra, and there's also a version as a pre sheaf of prospectra. And at the beginning of your day, you choose which one you want to work with, and then you continue to work with that one. And if you want to compare one to the other, then you use there's a junction which will yeah. <clears throat> So we have we have these two descent. Um, what am I doing here? Descent spectral sequences. So this is the homotopy groups of the phi sheafification K Q X. Okay. Um, so you know that. So before I phi sheafify the uh, the homotopy groups are the same. Uh, positive homotopy groups are the same, or the, and so you just we just need to show that the negative. Okay. So the idea is that for if minus q is positive, then we already know that these two sheaves of <clears throat> abelian groups are the same. If minus q is negative, then. Um, uh, these ones are zero, and so it suffices to show that these ones are zero to to know that these are the same. So we want to show that phi minus q k b phi zero for q positive. So, <clears throat> so fiber functors of this cat is topos correspond to in fur rings. Right, so I always try and keep the the n as the the thickening direction, and lambda is the the neighborhood direction, like the um in the in the topos theoretic sense. So these are the, the n is the formal neighborhood direction in the nilpotent sense. Uh. Yeah, so these are a finite presentation over over S. Um, so in pro rings such that something something. And um particular colim of uh the um 
R lambda. Juiced is a Hansel valuation ring. <clears throat> so these, these are affine schemes. In, um, these are affine schemes of finite type over S. Uh, and the way that I define the category of, so I define the category of formal schemes as these end objects, which are um, completions. So all of these uh, transition morphisms in such a system will be a nilpotent thinking. So if I take the reduct, reduced scheme of any one of them, they're all, I get the same thing. So they all have the same underlying reduced scheme. So for any n, so if I fix lambda, and then all of the Rn have the same reduced ring. And that's what I wrote here. Um, so there's some something something. So I mean, okay, so also you could might notice that that if you take the reduced, the reduced, uh, if you take R reduced, you get O here. Because a reduced is, is kappa. So the, the something something is the, yeah, it's something something. Um, okay, so now we have so let's we want to show these sheaves are zero, so let's evaluate them on our local rings. Uh, we have some colim. I, I, A, B, quote, slim, R, N, lambda, and um, by def the way that I've defined, the way that I've just extended K, this was Joseph's question, I write kind of extended, so the way that I extended this from discrete schemes to formal schemes, so this one is, a, is by definition, this is Colium. Lambda lim over n of pi i k b r n lambda, but when so negative negative k theory is nil invariant on affine things. So so these are all the same as r reduced. So this is co-limit, um, yeah. So I, I asked Georg for a reference for this and he said, it's so easy it doesn't need a reference, but you can, <laughs> you can find it in the book of bus. Aravind told me it's also an exercise in the first, first chapter of Chuck's book. I, I, K, B, R lambda reduced. Um, but now we have a Hensel valuation ring. Um, so this is pi i a b of some Hensel valuation ring. Um, so so in all of this, i is i is less than zero. Um, and so then this is. Matthew proved this in um, in our paper. That this is zero. So that's some of what we have so far. The end. <laughs> Yes. Uh, it's uh, probably trivial, but wouldn't there be some limb one term also? Oh, uh... <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that afterwards. I, I, yeah, okay, I see. 
Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. No, there is something to check that I didn't check. You're completely right. There's a lim one term that I completely ignored. Uh, yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah, there's something to check. You have to be, yeah. So something I've learned in this project is that you have to be very, very careful about where the limbs and the colimbs are because you can very easily accidentally swap them and then improve the Riemann hypothesis. Yeah, okay. Any other questions? Why is it you want to show that the localization of the fillin is the BAS? So you want to show that automatically the, the BAS D looping gets induced by this localization. Is that? Yeah. But then I see in the, in the BAS. I see. So, and why is it enough to show that the local things are zero, stocks are zero? Ah, oh, now I can see it better. Okay. Now I. Yes. Very good. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Any other question? Is it proof by board moving or? <laughs> if not, let's thank. Oh, no, there's a. Yes. You can have okay. okay. If not, let's thank Shane again.